Whatever you do, don't tell Sean. Shit, they're back. I have the evidence. You, I feel like you're kind of slowly converting me to a BMW nerd, okay. like you guys. Well, that would be my achievement of my lifetime, I think. All right, well, <laughs> so last night, for whatever reason, Drew let me drive his uh, brand new G80 M3, and oh my God, I am so blown away. <laughs> that thing, there's no right for that car to be that fast, yeah. especially because you know, we had a chance to drive your pink one quite a bit and it being manual and rear wheel drive, it's pretty hard to kind of put down the power. Yep. It, it makes so much power that you can make the car spin in fourth gear. Yeah. Fourth. With automatic all wheel drive. Yeah. I was floored. I, it, it's, to me, it, it felt like a four door R35 GTR. That's the only way I can 100%. put it. 100%, I mean, that is the GTR of the BMW of, of the time right now like that essence of the all-wheel drive, full technology. I mean, that's a crazy car. Thing is fast, but the evolution kind of came from that and then some of the old stuff that you have here in your pr private collection. Yeah, I mean, how'd we get to the M3? I mean, the 02, the 2002, this is a 71. It's a round tail light car. So that's an early 2002. This was a three series before there were three series. Um, it was this car. And you know, really before this, this came, a lot of people didn't know about that you could make a two-door coupe be sporty. And BMW pretty much, I mean, this is a legendary car. Even if you don't like BMW, you know about the 2002s. Um, have you always liked BMWs? Have you always been a BMW fan? I have, yeah, I have. My, um, my dad had them back in the early 2000s and late 90s. He had an M5, an E39 M5, which I loved. And um, I was lucky enough to have an E36 M3 as my car. That was what my dad got me when I started driving. So I was around the car so much and I would go to the car meets with the other guys with BMWs and that was it. I mean, I've been partial. And then of course I had my hobby shop, which was kind of this back in the day. And then it morphed into, into PSI. So I've had PSI since 08. Yeah, so for those of you guys who don't know, Sean, he runs a Precision Sport Industries, yeah. right? Precision Sport Industries, they uh, build BMWs, they make BMW parts, and they also work on Porsches. So yeah. you're a Porsche guy too. Yeah, but and, it's, uh, and we're a shop first. I mean, we do repair and service, we do heavy maintenance. We, we're, we just started getting into making parts and doing online sales, but we've always been the place you go to get your car fixed or you know, souped up. But you getting that car, which I'm super jealous of, by the way, uh, a BMW as your first vehicle, it kind of rolled into this. It's pretty insane. Yeah, I mean, it makes me, it made me wonder, well, if this M3, being an E36, is so good, like, what came before? And I would go to Borders Books, which this is OG stuff, I think you remember that store, and get all the BMW magazines from Europe, and sit down and read all of them and I would find out about E30 M3s and 2002s and everything and it made me want those cars because they look they look like a BMW, you didn't really see them that often. So I think my second car was actually this E30 M3. So we did a full feature on this so you guys can watch the full feature on this. Can we take a look at the motor on this one? Yeah, absolutely. 2002s, I've shot a couple of these. This one's in amazing condition. This is a pretty much bone stock car kind of how it comes. It's got the single Solex carb. You know, this is just a, it's just a stock car. I mean, it's lowered, I have exhausts on it and some cool widened steely wheels, which are period wheels. But like, I kind of wanted a stock looking car. And if you notice, Larry, I mean, this is not like a brand new restoration, fresh restoration car. This is a driver, driver quality car. And for me, that's what I want because I want to be able to drive the car and not stress out over it and park. I mean, everybody parks in the lower 30, like way out in the parking lot to protect their car because they love it. But like, I want to be able to drive this car and enjoy it and not worry about every rock chip, not worry about every dirt, every piece of dust. So that's how I bought it. And then I slowly make my changes to it. I slowly do things that make the car better. And, and that's how I enjoy the car. 
All right, let's really dig into this. This is a Bavaria. This is something that you restored. This is an original car, actually. It had only been, it's only been painted a couple places a couple times. Um, it has really low mileage. It was originally a California car. The color name is Sahara. It's called Sahara Beige. And the interior color is called Tobacco, which is awesome because it feels like when they used to name the colors, they actually made sense. <laughs> from a colorway mm -hmm. and a color perspective. But this is a 72 Bavaria. So this is a carbureted version of the M30. So this has the big six cylinder motor, the 3.0 the three, 3 uh, motor that the CSLs have, very similar to the CSL motor, which you know everyone knows 3.0 CSL. Um, and this has a four speed manual transmission. Um, Whoa. So, so this is like equivalent to like a seven series? Correct, this is a seven series before there was a seven series. Yes. Manual four speed? It's manual, yep. And, and how many liters? It's a three liter, three, three liter, liter motor. It's got dual Zenith carbs on it. I'll pop Let's take a look at this. I've never seen one before. United Airlines, did this person work for United Airlines? They did, yeah. That was the original sticker that was on the car from the first owner. That's another thing that I try to leave on the cars are all the original neat stickers when the car was new and, and all of that. Yo, um, that is so cool. Yeah. It's, so it's so just, what year is that, 2002? It's a 71. And this is a 72? Yeah. So you could see both of these cars on the road at the same time. Yeah, so in, 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 you know, in recent, if you think of it in recent series production, three series, seven series. And then I have peaking in the back over there. I have a five series of the time, actually a little bit earlier, that's a 64, but that was a five series before a five series. It's 1800 Ti. Mm. So, you know, these were when BMW was making the cars that they thought were cool. This is when BMW was making the cars and they didn't really know that they were gonna make series, series production cars. It was before they come up with the three series, five series, seven. I guess it's before they came up with a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> that they have now. Well, the, the crazy thing to me is that the design language is similar, but I feel like looking at this car, it feels newer for whatever reason. Uh, maybe because it is fancier, like the inside is incredible. I couldn't imagine in 1971, this is it 71? It's a 72, so, but same, I mean, 70, yeah, 72. I, could, I couldn't like, imagine in 1972, driving this on the street. This is so I mean, you cool. definitely stood out uh, because of the, you know, just the, this has a quality look to it that you see when you, you know, everything about it, the touch points of metal, like the dash, like it's cool. And, and it's like, you know, a lot of people say this, it's like overused, but I mean, driving a classic car is like going back in time to that era. And I think about it a lot. I think about like, what it means to, to drive it and what it meant, you know, to those people. And, so, um, so then um, this, like the, the seats, is this all unrestored? Yeah, it's all original. Huh. It's, a, it's all 100% original. It is so um, nice. It was just, it's just made from a great material, the great vinyl and everything. And it was just kept, you know, this is an AC garage, but this is a California car. It was kept in LA, kept in Northern California, and it just, the guy, is, guy took care of it. This is um, so nice. So did, did this ever come in automatic? They do come in automatic, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay, so out of the cars that I wanna drive, this is the one I think we should take out yeah, we today. Will. So, cause I've never seen one even or driven yeah, one. I'd love for you to drive it. You will, you will absolutely be blown away. It is butter smooth. We could pour some wine all the way up to the edge and drink it and not spill it because <laughs> it's so smooth. What other cars do we have here? Okay, I'm, so, I'm, okay, you're starting to convert me to a BMW nerd. Okay. I'm still not one though. I don't really know that's what fair. any well, maybe of these are, done. except for that one in the back, because uh, that's, <laughs> that's like a good drift car <laughs> yeah, in the making. Yeah, yeah those right, have so become really popular. What is this? So this is a E28. So this is the, the second series of BMW's production of a five series. This is a 535 IS which is the model just under the M5 of the day. 
and this is a, a this is lock silver with a, this has cardinal interior, so it has a red interior inside. So this is the last year of production for E28s that look like have this body style. Um, and then what year is it? It's an 88. 88. Okay. So this uh, this has a basically it has a it has an M30 in it, which is same similar motor to this, just an an evolutionary. It's obviously um, not carbureted; it's fuel injected. Got it. Can we take a look at it? Yeah, I have some modifications to it. This is a this is another manual. This is a five speed, um, and this has so pretty eighties. This is a five speed car. It has an exhaust. It has what's called a California bumper. So this has an OEM bumper that is pushed in. It normally has some um, shocks inside. Mm. So you remove the shocks and you push in the bumpers. Yeah. And they've been painted to kind of, and when we go over the M5 that we have over there in the corner, I'll show you what like the way US bumpers look when they're not California modified. I've always liked this body style of a car. And this, the cool thing too, is that this has the shark nose, which I didn't bring up that the Bavaria has. It has the pointed front to it. And this carried through, you know, think about it. I mean, there's, what is there, 16 years between these two cars, 72 and 88, and there's a lot of similarities to it. Um, <laughs> the headlight wipers. Yeah, are that was an option. It has the, full, has the full system in it, it has the stock, it has the pump, it has an extended tank for those. I just always liked it, because it's just so 80s and so absurd that I had to have it on the car. This is your dad's car? This is my dad's Porsche. It's an original G-body car. He bought, went, bought from my mom when she was pregnant with me. So this is a 84 original Wait, car. He bought it for your mom? It was like a, you know, the push present thing you buy when, you're, when your wife is pregnant. That's, that's some push present. Look at this. Yeah. Look how comfortable this is, dude. <laughs> I know that's just a cover, yeah. but this is yeah. very 80s. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the covers have never been off since like 86 or whatever. <laughs> so it's my dad probably put them on. so new underneath. Yeah, it is. And I love it. Behind it is a 356 that I've had for a while. That's a project car. I haven't obviously done anything with it, but I picked that up for 10,000 <laughs> bucks. Um, what is it, 20 years ago or uh, how long yeah, ago did 20, you get this? 20 years ago, yeah. Probably not, maybe not 20, probably 15 years. Um, it was actually at a shop that my dad used to go to before I had my shop to work on his cars. And it was always parked in the back. And it was a story of it was an airline pilot's car. He brought it there for service and he never picked it up and never contacted the shop again. And the shop ended up closing and my dad annoyed the guy enough. And he just called my dad one day and said, hey, can you come pick this up? And my dad called me and said, hey, let's get that 356. I have some cool plans for this. Um, I have some speedster seats for it. I have an exhaust for it, but I'm gonna restore it, but I'm gonna do it as a driver again, Larry, so that I can just have fun with the car. But it's all there. It's all original glass. It's it, all original interior. I feel like it's a survivor though. It is, it is. Is this I, original paint? Uh, it was, a, the color's originally ivory. You can actually uh, see it. It was repainted um, at some point, but I wanna make it back to ivory. I wanna keep the interior just how it is and just, just drive the car. Um, Honestly, if you took this to Luftgekalt with it like this, yeah. running, it would get quite a bit of attention. Yeah, well maybe I would. Maybe I would, yeah, I haven't decided. I just like it, I like the patina. There's a couple other cars I don't have in my shop right now, I don't have in my warehouse now that are actually cars that I found that were in storage for 30 years and I'm keeping the patina on the outside. I'm mm. redoing the interior. I'm putting a cool motor in it. I, I just love this. It, it must, so how long has it been sitting potentially? Like 30 years Probably, or yeah. more? Probably. 40 years? Um, when know. we first got it, we, we, put, uh, a, we went through the whole motor and got it running and I drove it like this for about six months and stuff until, you know, this is borderline of a car that you can't really drive every day because of its rarity and also because you can't get out of the way of people. Right. It's just not a fast Jeff Swart will have a word with you about that. I'm sure he would. <laughs> I would love to have a word with him about it. He, um, he drives his uh, Prie everywhere with a canoe on top of it. But uh, He does, yeah. Yeah. That long, dude? This is coming to Luft. <laughs> no, no problem, dude. Yeah, I'm good with that. You can see a crowd around this thing. This is so cool. I love that it's been sitting for so long and it's going to be running again. All right, a cool um, couple more cars. We'll come to this last. Okay. Um, what's on the lift here? This is an E12, 
5 Series. It's a 528i. So this is the first series that BMW made. So this is the, it's called a first five. It's a five series E12. Um, it's very similar to an E28 in size, but suspension geometry, uh, different things about it. This has another big six cylinder in it, just like the, the two cars we looked at previous. I just always liked the way these looked. And I found this in Arizona. It has 130,000 original miles. And I put the Euro bumpers on it, which are the smaller bumpers, and then the period BBS Molly wheels and stuff like that, just. Okay, so I have a question. Where are all these cars? Do, are, do a lot of these cars survive? There's not a lot of them around. Um, a lot of the a lot of these series cars that BMW made, like an E12 and an E28, like that E28 that I have has 300,000 miles, so I bought it. People drove the cars until they literally didn't move. Because of the quality and how they were built, they just lasted forever. And a lot of the cars, like to find a nice E28 or a nice E12 is really difficult, really difficult. So, you know, I've been shooting cars and I've been part of car culture, especially modified cars for 17 years now. For whatever reason, in terms of old BMWs, I've shot plenty of 2002s and more than I can count E30s. Never shot one of these cars. This, this, Bavaria, never even seen one of those, never seen one of those. Yeah. You know, for whatever reason, I don't know why. Maybe it's because they're more specialized. I think that they're they're more rare, and I think that the the classic BMW community is a lot is very small. But I think the the classic community is big in O2s. Like, there's a lot of O2s. You go to the Pelican Parts meet. There's 20 O2s there. There might be one Bavaria there. You know. This is like in the weeds of classic cars. And if you check out the video that I made with Ray that's on my PSI channel, he's the one that got me into the stuff that is special not only to BMW, but the stuff that I didn't know about, that I didn't know why it was so special, like E12s and like Bavarias. I never knew about those cars either until I started hanging out with Ray. Do you know any other collectors that have these sort of cars? Yeah, there's, there's a few of them that I know. There's a, there's a couple guys in Miami which maybe we can go see when, I go, when we go down there maybe, or um, there's some in Portland. They are around, but you know, I've really, I really want to get them together um, and, you know, and, and have more of a classic BMW push because I think Porsche, you, know, you, you mentioned Pat. I mean, Pat does a great job with Porsche Classic. Porsche really ha is all in for that. And to me, it's like a reciprocal relationship. Like if you have a new Porsche and you don't know what the history is, and you learn that history, it makes you want a classic Porsche, and vice versa. You have a classic Porsche, well, new ones are really cool, and it just feeds itself. And to me, I think BMW needs to do a better job educating customers on, you have a new 5 Series, that's cool. Here's an old one, here's an old one. Here's what, what that came from. So they appreciate their cars more, and I, and I think they should learn from Porsche on, on that. Hmm. It's interesting because um, they, BMW was so much on the forefront of advertising. Like a lot of what BMW did in the early 2000s, you know, with the BMW films, kind of really influenced me and my friends at the time, you know, yeah. to, in terms of like what's cool and what is hot. I remember going to the LA Auto Show, going to the BMW booth, and just being so happy to be able to get a DVD copy of the BMW films. Specifically, of course, the one that I feel like is the most famous was featuring the E39 yeah. M5. The one that Guy Ritchie directed. Yeah, 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 the one that Guy Ritchie directed, Owen Wills, or... Uh, Clive Owen. Clive Owen. Yeah. Clive, Clive Owen, Owen drove it, Madonna and it was, was Madonna it. And yeah. was in it. Like that kind of changed my life, honestly, that one film. Yeah, Just I agree. Be because yeah. of how forward thinking it was in terms of like advertising, like it was a web series, web film mm -hmm. before YouTube, yeah. you know, before all of these streaming services. 100%, it was way ahead of its time. 
Yeah. But the, I feel like BMW kind of needs some to do something like that again. I agree. To for for the modern car enthusiasts, they do. And uh, BMW works a lot with the CCA, and they do a great job when they do work together. But to me, it's about just sharing the the history of the car and saying you know showing why they're cool and having them there. BMW has a lot of historic cars, and if you go to the museum in Germany, they have a lot there. But I just feel like they need to share it more, I think. The best way All right, let's talk about this uh, M5. And then we'll talk about the car that I would just drive and own today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah the techno, my technology yeah, car. Yeah. All um, right, let's, let's talk about this, okay. M5. Yeah, so this is an E28, which is the same series as this. This is an 88, it's an M5. So this is the first M5. So before these came in E28, there was not an M5. There was an M535 that they came out with in the E12 models, which is what my white car is we just showed. But this is a S38 motor, which is another big six cylinder from BMW. It's a five speed manual transmission. And this is a US car. So anybody that knows about these cars would know it was US because they would see the color because every US car, Larry, came in black with natural interior, every single one. Mm. That was BMW's deal. They're like, okay, we're gonna bring this car to the US and here's the color choices. There are none. You want the car, you get it in this. There's some limited cars that actually sneaked a black interior. There's some Canada, Canadian cars that snuck a, a black interior. It also has the stock bumper on it. So one of the things you'll notice is this has individ six individual throttle bodies. This is really close to the four cylinder that comes in the E30 M3 stock, the S14, except this has six cylinders. So if you were to lop off two cylinders, it would look almost identical. Yeah, uh, engine -wise. I could see that. I could yeah. definitely see that. Yeah. So, so um, how many liters is this? This is a three liter, I believe. Uh, three liter, it's an S38. Um, it's a five speed manual transmission. And then this is the, this has a stock yeah. U.S. or California this is bumper? A U, this is a U.S. bumper. So the one, my, mine is modified as a California style, which means oh, okay. you remove the, the, the shocks and Got you push it. this in so it's not so big. This is when a bumper is actually a bumper. You could bump people. Yes. And, <laughs> like, especially and, when you're parking in New York or San Francisco. Yeah. That, that's, how you, that's how you feel you've got into your spot because you hit the person yeah. in the back. Yeah, and I mean, a popular modification for these cars is the Euro bumpers because they're much smaller, just like the E12, very small, right. um, and changing the lights. Like I have the Euro headlights on my car, which are staggered. It's a big and then a small. This is a, this is a stock US car. Um, this is the way they came uh, in the US. And what year is this? This is an 88. So when this car was released. Same year as that. Yeah, when this car was released, it was the fastest sedan in the world. This was it. Mm. And this was like a, I believe close to a $40,000, $50,000 car at the time. So it was a very expensive, I mean, you were a G if you had this. Like, Interesting. <laughs> in the late 80s. Got it. It's really good condition. Probably yeah. just needs some cleaning, huh? Yeah, it does. We just got this car. I found this car uh, and we're, we need to go through it and restore it. I have, just haven't had any time. But we're just gonna do the, like I said, I'm gonna keep it the driver quality, keep it, keep it cool. But this is a part of BMW history. I mean, this is a car, in my opinion, this is the best M5 and this is one of the best BMWs that you can have. Mm -hmm. Out of all, my, all the ones that I've driven and all the ones that I've been around, this is where it's at. This is super cool. I love this. So now, I would drive this, I would drive that, and I would drive that. <laughs> so let's talk about the modern 90s BMW. This is Tyler's favorite also. I think so, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. It's four door too. It's a four door. You love four doors. I'm a four door guy, sedan is best, Yeah, actually. This is cool, so tell me about this. Yeah, so this is a, um, it's a 98 Techno Violet sedan, five speed. Last of its kind, huh? 98, right? Yeah, 98, yeah, last year they made the sedan. So this is a sedan, this car has like, I believe it has about 68,000 miles. It's pretty low miles. I've had the car since 2001. I love the car, I got it, I loved it. It's another car I would never, I would never get rid of. 
and I like the color. The, the funny thing was, is I, I said, mentioned earlier in the video that I had a I had an E36 M3 when I started driving, and that car actually got rear-ended. I was stopped at a light, and that car got hit and was totaled. Okay, so I was I was super upset because that was my first car, and so insurance gave me a check for the car, and I started looking for cars. And my dad's buddy that worked at Porsche of Orlando called me, called my dad and me, and said, "Hey, I sold two Porsches today." and both customers traded in E36 M3s. And I haven't put them up in the front yet, I want you guys to come look at them. So we got in the car, went to Porsche Orlando, and they had this car, and they had a coupe Dakar with Modena interior, which is a brown, like a brownish caramel interior. And I couldn't decide what I wanted, because I really liked Dakar. I, ultimately, I, I liked the purple, because the purple was very rare at the time. And I had never been able to see a sedan that was in purple, ever. I had never seen one. And I was like, this is what I want. And I was happy to get it, because now people know the rarity of sedans in general, five-speed sedans in general, and then to have a Technopilot one. At the time, I didn't buy it to be rare. I bought it because I liked the purple. I really liked the purple. And I think now it's a period correct thing with the car. It's like a cool... It's a cool thing. I haven't mentioned that I probably you guys have seen in the video is that I'm obsessed with wheels. Like I love the cars obviously, but like the wheels matter to me. And like on the E28, like those are BBS RSs. So those are period correct BBS RSs for the late eighties. It's to me, I want to have the wheels be the period of the car because to me it makes it, it makes the car if you had the car when it was new, if we went in a time machine, Larry, and we went and bought this car from BMW, you and I would be looking at all the actual magazines because there is no internet, and we would find these wheels and be like, those are the jam. So to me, that's a part of it. And on my E36, I have the, these are Hartga wheels. These are the split spoke wheels made by OZ. So they have a step lip. These were period in E36 world. They were also period in E30 world and E28 world. But I had these wheels. I actually used to run these wheels on my E30, Larry. Um, but when I got my E50s, my BBSs, which were my dream wheel for the E30, I moved them to this car. And just, they're fun, fun period wheels. Yeah, so um, I guess there's some, other, there's some other wheels there too I have for my wagon. So I don't know if you guys saw when you were at the shop, but I have a Technoviolet manual wagon, mm. a 328i wagon that I bought. And these are the wheels for it. They finally came after a year. They look great. They're, they're, yeah, they're E87, so they're 17 inch uh, E series BBS Motorsport wheels. They look super cool. Yeah, and to me they match the E36 in every way. Like when I went to Rolex 24 when I was a kid and I saw the wide body E36 PTG cars, these were the wheels that they ran. I think they ran 18s, but they were the same style, same wheel. Um, All right, last but not least, let's talk about this and then we'll go for a quick drive. So this is an 1800 Ti, which is a, it's a 1964. I bought this from a 94 year old man who was the original owner of the car. So this is a car that was, this is a five series before it was a five series. It looks a lot like a 2002. Um, and in fact, I have another one of these that I drive, which is actually at the, it's getting dry ice treated right now. Um, but every time I drive it, everyone's like, man, that's a really cool 2002. It's a huge 2002. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get a close up, this is actually the original BMW badge. And see, it has the serif font on it. Mm. So that's like an OG BMW, and it's brass. See how it has that gold color to it? Mm -hmm. It's the original badge from the car. Wow. Um, what are you gonna do with it? I have it, cause I'm gonna probably restore it one day and make it back to the original. So originally the car was Derby, which is a dark gray a BMW color, very rare. And the, he used to rally this car. So back in, back in the 80s, a rally was like a timed event, but it wasn't like a racing event, it was just, a drive with your buddy and you kind of did it and that's what he did with this car. He painted it Polaris silver because Polaris silver is the BMW German color for racing. So he wanted that uh, and he repainted the car. Oh, definitely so, smells old. It does, but the interior is original. It's an original car. 
It has a really neat shift knob. That's the original steering wheel. Crazy. I haven't even cleaned it. I literally got it and put it in here. I haven't even done anything with the car, but the windows all rolled down. It was just an original car and... <clears throat> Can we see under the hood? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> it's old. Yeah. But it's all there. Well, it's let a me go on that side. It's a complete car. Um, and I just couldn't, I saw it on Craigslist listed and I, I really didn't want someone to get it and part it out or do anything else with it. So I snatched it. This is pretty cool. I have other buddies like my buddy Ray and then uh, Danny and a bunch of other people that have these cars. And every time we find one, we buy it because it preserves. These are really difficult cars to find parts for. They're not as sought after as the 2002s. So when I see one, I get it. And whether I'm gonna use it for one of my cars or one of the guys in our Facebook group is gonna use it, it's just one of those things, man, you do for the car and you do for the community. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, like, look at something like this. Like, how are you going to get a new corner light for this? Yeah, you, 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 you know, can't. You, you, yeah, you, you have to get it restored. I, you, you have to find someone with it or you have to get it recreated. I mean, it's, it's crazy what you have to go through. I mean, to restore the car to be a new car is, is easily 100 grand. Easily. Like, and that's not even doing, like, a Pebble Beach car. That's just making the car right and doing it right. Uh, for you or for me to be to be happy with the car, mm. um, but it's neat to have um, a car with original parts frozen in time. And I was really glad to get the car from the original owner because he really wanted it to go to someone that cares about the car. And we had a lot of conversations over the phone about that. So that was another cool thing. I mean, you know, all the cars have a story, and that's important to me as you know as it is to carry that on. So just kind of a neat thing. So neat. I love it. All right, let's take the Bavaria out. I love that sound. Listen, listen. Get this sound. Sounds like a rotary, dude. Sounds great. All right, you want to drive? I'll drive it? now and get it warmed up, and then okay. we'll, we'll swap. Okay. All right. So I want it to drive right. Okay. All right, here we go. Right right. You did it perfect. It's two millimeters away. Is it really? Yeah. Look. Oh, I'm so Sean and I. <laughs> Sean and I are getting in the BMW time machine. Oh my God, that sound is horrible. It is, it's a, Like every, like my. It's for the seatbelt. Oh, it's so horrible. Oh, it's so of era. It is. I probably will end up unplugging the little. It's so good. The little, the little So piece. I kind of like the shock seats too. Yeah, they're horsehair. It's pretty cool. So one of the things I, I kind of mentioned that, you know, I like to do is I, I mentioned the wheels being period correct, but also mm -hmm. the cars are all modified, if you notice. The only ones that are not, of course, is my little 1800 because it's a stock car. Mm -hmm. But this is modified. This has a, a Nardi wheel from 1972 on it, mm -hmm. um, which the original guy that I bought the car from, Bill, he found an S in Germany at Techno Classica show. So he bought this in Germany for this car. It's a big Nardi wheel for a big body car. Mm -hmm. um, so I kept it, of course. And then you mentioned the wheels. It has the period Mali wheels on it. Yeah, and then um, and then this has some lowering springs and some stuff because these cars sit very high from BMW. Um, but. So this is carbureted. Yep. And it has the Zenith carbs on it, which are really sensitive. They have built-in chokes. So um, before you guys got there, we had moved the car a few times. And the problem is if you move the car, it loads up the carbs with fuel because it's in cold start. Got it. And um, anytime it does that, it, it tends to start and run very, very rich. So I figured I'd drive it first and 
make sure it's good and turn it over to the master. So do you have to tune the cars with yeah, this Yes, you do. And I have two guys that do that that are in their late 60s that are literally have suitcases with the jets in them and have all the special tools in order to do it. That's something that is unfortunately a dying breed. So a lot of the technicians I have that work for me are BMW factory trained, but not on carburetors, of mm, course. Of course. But, you know. Yeah. What was the last year, do you know, of carbureted BMWs? Um, probably, probably around this time. Really, 72, 73, you started introducing mechanical fuel injection with a, with a pump. So when you went to go buy, like that my 2002, when you went to the dealership, they had three versions. They had the 2002 base model, which is what my car is. They had a TI, which was a dual side draft carburetor 02, which made about 10, 15 more horsepower. And then they had a TII, which was an actual mechanical fuel injected car. So really, the most of the cars that are out are the base model, but the second most are the TII because people were like, why would I buy a TI? And a TI really is the rarest version of a 2002 and those go for the most money just because people didn't buy them. But those wow. were really the TI version was really the first M car version of the 2002 uh, that wasn't, wasn't fuel injected. It's kind of interesting the design language is still the same, like including the gauges, because like the gauges on the E30 look like this. Yeah. But obviously it's just a little more modern. The interior is in incredible condition. I can't believe it survived this. Yeah, it's such time. a cool, just, it's just so well made. The materials that they made everything from, and this car has just been really well kept. The glass is clean, everything is just so clean. Yeah, such the, a neat car. The seats are the best part. Yeah, I agree. Is this one of your favorite cars that you own? It is, yeah. Thing is so cool. I love it. I can't believe it. I, I there's something cool about big sedans, yeah. big body cars that yeah, are manual. It's, it's so funny too because like a lot of the cars we just went over in the shop are sedans. You know, like the 2002 and the E30 are my exceptions, but most of the cars I have are sedans. I just I like the room, I like the seating position, and I like the drive of the of the car. But you know, this car is like no slouch. I mean, this is a this car keeps up with you know I can drive this every single day and keep up with traffic and drive on the highway and you know we can sit and have a conversation right now and yeah even the windows up yeah, it's, yeah so does this have AC it does yeah it has AC and heat uh, it has a whole fan system too where you can has a blower the vents are hidden on the left and the right and underneath the dash. And AC does work, I use it when it's, when it, not, you know, today's a great day in Florida, but I do use it. This is so cool, I love it. Yeah, the color of the seats, so good. Yeah, it's a neat color combination. The beige, the Sahara beige on the outside kind of grew on me, but the interior color m makes it, the, the combination makes the car. And, you know, I think the color makes a car. I think the color of a car and the color that's chosen for a car, it can make or break it. It can be the same model with the same modifications, but if the color's not right, it just doesn't make it. But this is such a reliable car, it never fails. So like, I would, I would drive this across the country. I wouldn't even hesitate to do it. Really, wow. Yeah, yeah these, these are bulletproof cars. Oh, this is a cool, what a neat <laughs> yeah, door handle. Yeah, it is a neat door handle. <clears throat> Here we go. Bavaria. <coughs> it's a really smooth is it transmission. Low? Engagement? The pedal? No, oh, not, not it's really. It's, it's, it, it, it's not, not the worst. Oh, this is so cool! I love the wheel. Yeah, the, it, the it's thin. So, it's so cool. Wheel, and then it is. Uh, it does have power steering, then. Huh? Yeah, it's assisted. I would go straight, like the straight. same way we we went. Be, it's a good road. Whoa! What a cool car! 
like the shift knob, the the, the things that I'm touching yeah. are very. Yeah, the, um, the the tactile stuff inside the car again make, make the car. Yeah, yeah, it's it's super cool. It's the everyday interaction that. No, look at I mean like. What a cute little horn button too. <laughs> yeah. It's so little. Yeah, it's funny. Huh. Yeah, you can really see, like where, a lot of the design came from. Yeah. Yeah, and you also see a lot of partners with BMW. Like it's a you know VDO makes made these gauges. Mm. They still make them. Like. <clears throat> Straight? Yeah, just go straight. It drives, it just drives like a modern car. Yeah. It drives perfect. Yeah. And nothing has been updated. I mean, it's an original drivetrain, original car. Like, there's nothing that we finesse to make it drive like a... So, so then... Is it a 61,000 miles or 161 or 2? Probably 161. Okay. Say. It's interesting that they didn't think <laughs> that they needed it to make I it. I know. Six digits. I know. Like, it's or almost I'm, like they didn't think it was going to make it. Well, I think that they were just used to people having like the log books of service uh, where they knew what the where the what the mileage was when it crossed 100. Got it. I think is what was part of it, but it's it is a funny um, it is a funny thing. That's but you know a lot of the um, times when I look for a classic BMW, the mileage is not really like when it, when a car is 40 plus years old, the mileage doesn't really come into play. I mean, obviously it matters if someone knows it, but it's really the condition of the car. Like I can look at a classic BMW and know what the mileage is by looking at the car, looking at the dash and the seats and the engine bay and different things. Right. Yeah, if it was, even if it had 361,000 miles, it doesn't matter if it was maintained. 100%. Properly yeah. and if it was garaged and uh, it was 100%. like- 100%, I mean, what's a, once a car of, gets to be that age, it's really about the history of the car and who owned it and who took care of it more than the mileage of right. it. Honestly, this is the most perfect day in Florida that I've ever <laughs> seen. It's a great day. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. It's clear, not a cloud in the sky. How is that even possible for Florida? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Huh. Man, you could be mobbing in this thing pretty good, huh? Yeah, you can. So then, do you have to get non-ethanol gas for this? I do. Um, you don't have to if you're driving a car enough. But if you let the car sit with the ethanol in it, it, it can gum up the carburetors pretty bad. So um, I, I do buy the non-ethanol because uh, the octane is really something that obviously matters, but it's not as, as important as on a newer BMW. Luckily, we have the Wawa's and the racetracks here that have the ethanol-free gas, pretty oh, prevalent. So, we lucked out with that. Man. Really, the best thing you can do for classic cars is just get out and drive them. The more the cars sit, the more that they sit around, even if they're in a completely AC garage, is, you know, they just really go, go downhill. And that's something, you know, that I always knew, obviously, because I've had my shop, but like, Ray, is always somebody that told me that that and he cycles his cars I mean, he has 50 you know over 50 of them and he cycles them in and out every week and drives them oh, um, yeah. to keep them running and keep them on the road and it's also for him he wants to enjoy the cars he does they're not just there for him to look at yeah one thing that i never thought about that leno actually mentioned to me is that he has to start the cars and drive the cars because eventually what happens is all the oil seeps down to the pan and then the, it's just bare metal yeah you know inside the engine and then moisture of course just from the atmosphere gets in there yeah and then it rusts 
the motor from the inside out. I never even would have thought about that. Yeah. Never. Yeah, there's just a lot to consider. And and to me, like part of owning these cars is, is not only driving them for, for me, but also taking them to Cars and Coffees and showing the cars and educating people about the, about the stuff and, and how cool it is. And that's the most fun for me is being able to, you know, obviously share this with you, Larry, but also, you know, to share the car. Yeah, this, the suspension is good too. Yeah. Really? Yeah. For it just being it's, lowering springs? It's styled, yeah. It's really good. What a cool car. Thank you so much for showing us your collection. I know all your BMWs aren't here. That's definitely a flex, but it's, it's just super cool that you're just into all of this stuff. I love touring collections and I love seeing what other people love Yeah. because that's just how I'm going to be able to learn. Cool. See you guys in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.